Hello folks, welcome back to some more Hobby Nightmares. Let's jump right in, shall we? If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. Please subscribe and try and help us reach our target of 20,000 subscribers for the first half of 2024. That would be amazing if you'd help us do that. That would be awesome. And that, that would get us halfway to our overall target for the channel of 40,000 subscribers. If I can hit that number, it's a very special number for all of us. If I can hit that eventually, then I'll be over the moon, to say the least. If you like what I do also, the Patreon is down below. And if you're getting any models, make sure you do it at Composite Games. They are down below and they do help out the channel. Use the promo code Northern Exile to get yourself 5% off of your model order at checkout. Right. Will says, Dear Northern Exile, I have been listening to your channel for a few weeks now and I love the content. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Will. Just a little history about me. I've been playing tabletop RPGs and the general scene since I was 13 years old. That's quite young for RPGs, but good on you. My first game was uh, West End Games' D6 Star Wars. I then joined the United States Marine Corps and then went into the army. During that time, I met my wife that, uh, uh, and the love for Star Wars RPGs grew from there. Okay, cool. A lot of you guys who are in the military are writing in. I don't know why. There's been something going around on the water. The first nightmare in my life in terms of the hobby happened when we went to a new game store that is uh, by one of the colleges in Tulsa, Oklahoma. First off, my wife can be very blunt. She is a physical therapist at a hospital and knows how to deal with cringe people. When we went into the store, every customer in that store turned and looked at her like they were cavemen and had just seen a woman for the first time. I could see that they, uh, by the way that they stared at her, that it made her feel a little bit uncomfortable. But before I could say anything, my wife tells them that she has what is called tits. If you want to look at a pair, you can, you can go on to some PORN sites. After that, we get what we need and we leave. I mean, my god, I'm, I, I... I mean, guys. Um... I'm okay with this. It's an okay response, do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, if my wife did that, if my missus did that, I'd be kind of, uh... Especially if that was my regular place, I'd be like, look, can you not... Do you know what I mean? I, I understand completely. I just wouldn't take her in there. You know, I just wouldn't take her in there. Because you're done now, right? You, your wife is the rude one. Even though she's in the right, she's in the right. But now, you know, you're going to have a hard time going back there now. Anyway. The next nightmare happened a few years at, later at my house. I was in the army at the time with a torn rotator cuff waiting for my surgery date. I just got home from work at my unit uh, that Friday. Everybody was there for our game to play Dark Heresy. We had uh, Dieter and his brother, Wesley, a.k.a. the brothers, and they were upstairs in the gaming room. The gaming room. Dude, you're so lucky. Tim, Sheen, Ricky, and Kenny were in the living room downstairs. I was walking down the hall and talking to my wife when Sean was trying to ask me a question. First, I have hearing loss because of my military service. So because I was talking to my wife, I couldn't hear him. Tim also states... Uh, starts to play something on a laptop for Kenny. Sean then gets into an argument with, argument with Tim for playing on the laptop whilst we're trying to set the game up. After that, Sean jumps on Tim and starts choking him. I look up after hearing that noise to see the fight breaking out. I move down the hall into the living room that was about 45 feet in, in two to three seconds. I grab Sean and throw him to the other side that is about 25 feet with my good arm and tell him to get out the house right now. I then turn and make sure Tim is alright. My wife Ashley looks him over and at the time the brothers come down hearing the fight and say they can't believe they missed seeing the action. After the last time we saw Sean he was at a local game shop walking around with his hands together talking to himself and mumbling about something uh, uh, about it in his gear. Okay, And then we never saw him again. But thank you for everything you do. After I started listening to you, you gave me the motivation to start building and painting my pile of shame. Also, I need help figuring out what army to collect for the next Warhammer tournament. I have a 15,000 point Tau army because I love the Fire Warrior game on PS2. I also have Dark Angels, Necrons, World Eaters. So, what should I do next? Thank you, Will. Okay, um, I'm going to come out, I'll go out on a limb and say that 
Sean was probably in the military too, right? He's not in the military as well. Sounds like he was. Mm. We have had so many. Sorry, guys. I'm on a health kick. So I'm knocking the, the tea on the head just for a little while. And I'm drinking water. You can hear it going off. That's what it is. Um, we've had so many stories from servicemen in the UK and the US who have come up with stories of, of people generally having weird tics and going above and beyond in the strange department and sort of snapping every now and again, like Sean did here. I wonder if that's what's happened there. Let me know, Will. Let me know in a, in a further email. And, of course, what I would collect if I was you, um, I can't say Grey Knights because the Grey Knight models at the moment aren't very good. If you have the money, I would combine Grey Knights and Primaris Marines into a single force, you know, cut them all up, convert them, put them together, so that you have Primaris-sized Grey Knights. That'd be cool. Uh, you don't need to collect very many models to do so either. Um, what I would do, though, is I'd probably go and maybe... got Dark Angels, Necrons, World Eaters. Maybe some Eldar, man. Eldar's quite an elite army. It's not a very big army. You'd probably get some of that together pretty quick. That I'm not really very good in the meta right now. I wouldn't know, because I'm playing one-page rules, not 10th edition. But anyway. Uh, AG, AJC says... Hello, Mr. Exile. I've been on a binge of your videos since I found and subscribed to your channel about a week ago. Good lad, good for you. There is something very touching about how people can open up to you and your heartfelt responses to them. Thank you, man. I wanted to write in and offer a couple of my experiences. They are less nightmares and more major bummers, but here we go. First, let me say that your advice about waiting for the right woman is spot on. For any of you younger listeners, I'm on the wrong side of 40 and didn't meet my wife until three years ago. D dude, you know what? 37 for a man's a good age. That's a good age to get married. 37. You've been through life. You've had your fill of looser women, right? You you've had your experiences. You you're now ready to settle. It's a good age. After spending my, my life measuring my own worth based on what uh, some pair of tits in tight jeans thought of me, and most of my 30s at the bottom of a bottle, I finally began to prioritise my own mental health. The irony is that if I had met this absolute angel of a woman at any other time in my life, she wouldn't have given me a second look. Join the club. Join the club. Mine too. Mine too. So my two cents. I agree with you, North, uh, that those uh, great women are out there, but you must, and I say must, have your own house in order first. You must be mature enough to handle marriage or a long-term relationship. These women are as mature as, uh, and as self-respecting as you are, and they won't hesitate to leave if you don't measure up to their standards. My wife doesn't understand the hobby. Painting and playing with toy soldiers is definitely not her bag. But, here's the important part, she understands it's important to me. She gives me time and space to do the hobby. In return, I make sure not to abuse that understanding, and I've never been happier in my life. That's the most important part there. Being sure not to abuse her understanding, it's very easy to start doing that, you know what I mean? Anyway, now on to the hobby. Feel free to take a drink of tea here. I will try and make this quick. We moved to a new town for work, and the first thing I did was find a local hobby shop. This place is great, with a ton of stock and plenty of gaming space. I am a new 40k player with just over a year in the hobby, and most of that was spent on Kill Team. I've always been more into building and painting than playing, and I've attached some of my stuff if you want to take a look. And don't worry, I don't pay full price full I didn't pay full price, sorry, for that Forge World Mini. Constructive criticism is welcome. Okay. Um Let's have a look here. Oh dude, that is pretty awesome for a beholder. That's pretty nice. I like that. You've used the inks really well too. That guy's shiny. He's shiny. Um, Marbo as well. Love it. Love it. Sly Marbo. Maybe a little bit more definition on his arms would be amazing. Because, you know, it's Sly Marbo, dude. He's got to have, like, massive fuck-off muscles. Let's put him on there. Um, one thing I'm going to say, guys, if you send me more than two to three um, pictures, I can't show many more of them. Because I'm going to be here forever. Do you know what I mean? And it, and it takes a long time for me to go through these because I want to give them... The, the time and appreciation that your work deserves. So I'd rather look over one or two than look over, and maybe three, than look over five, six, seven, because we're not going to have time to, do, to give them the time they deserve. But I love the Beholder. 
So, so the, the dimples there on the beholder do something similar for the muscles on Sly Marbo. Maybe not as deep, but you know what I mean. More definition, please. It's Sly. Gotta give Sly some muscles, dude. Just do it. I'll leave this up there for now. Alright. One of the owners was organising an escalation league to encourage people to develop new armies. It would start at 500 points, and every couple of weeks, the point limit would increase until it hit 2,000. I signed up and brought in Drukari because I like the look of their models, and I'm a glutton for punishment. My normal armies are Nids and Salamanders, because I feel like I roll natural good in real life, and the Sallies are the closest to that. The Dark Eldar literally lets me express my dark side, because I can paint them as nasty and as bdsm -y as I want. Without going into too much detail, a lot of the core regulars are the kind of 40k players that have been in the, the scene since 2nd or 3rd edition. Even asking for casual games sees me going up against a really good list that has been honed to perfection and I get, and I get blasted off the table by the top of turn 3. The Escalation League quickly became more of the same. People brought in armies that they had already painted and have been playing for years so now there's a great deal of personal frustration and apathy on my part. I don't look forward to my games, and my last opponent brought a Necron list that was absolutely no fun to play against because nothing my Drux could, could do could have any touch on him. Worst of all, he was able to scream me out, and my Deep Strike units had nowhere to go. It was rock, paper, scissors. I will readily admit he is a better player than me, but it wasn't an honest test of skill or a chance for me to learn because I never stood a chance, even before the game dice were rolled. G guy, I'm on your side here. Do you know what? Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 is an amazing game. Segway. Pow. But it is. It's an amazing game. I'm really lo loving it so far. Um, but the one thing it does do every now and again, which the original Dragon's Dogma didn't do, was that it's become more Dark Soulsified in the way that there are some instances in the game where from out of nowhere in the open world you will get stomped on out of nowhere a drake or something just lands on you kills you in one hit that's bad gameplay People, oh my god this game's so difficult no it isn't that's not difficult difficult is a test of my skill that i fail right that's a deletion you've literally deleted me from the game there that's frustration. That's all, that's all that is. I freely admit I'm not the best person at this game. But you doing that to me is frustrating. And it's not a test of skill. Alright? You're not testing my skill or my understanding of the game or its mechanics. You're just killing me. And it comes off as in bad taste. Do you know what I mean? It comes off as you, you know, being a dick. That's what it comes off across. The, the developer's being a dick. And it's not good. And it has happened multiple times. And it, it doesn't spoil the game, but it's something that I really wish was not in games at all. Because even From Software kind of learned their lesson with Elden Ring, where you could get your shit pushed in by a boss, but you went to the boss, right? And you fought the boss. And you failed. That's fine. And then you come away. Whereas, so so the, the bosses don't just follow you around the open world and annihilate you because they know that would hamper your enjoyment of the open world and it would be unfair, right? You know, I, I really do wish the, the Capcom uh, Dragon's Dogma they would patch something into the game that, that didn't happen. You know, you know what I mean? I don't mind being beaten. I don't mind losing to bosses. Absolutely not. Because you're testing my skill and if I come up wanting, I just have to get good, don't I? But just deleting me isn't testing my skill. That's just giving me frustration. And I think that's the issue you're having with 40k, my friend. Is that you're not being tested as a player. Things are happening to you in bad faith. So, I am on your side. So, I just wanted to express my frustration with the learning curve of the game and the difficulty I've had finding players near my experience level whom I can test myself with. Before you ask, yes, I love one-page rules and play it whenever I can. But besides me, there are only four other people that even want to try it. Yeah, that's a toxic thing, man. That is, that is a shitty thing. Um, the the warping of the opinion that Games Workshop have done have basically made sure that nobody wants to play anything but 40k. Alright? If you find a one-page rules guy, you're lucky. You're very, very, very lucky. Even though it's a better game. 
it's just a better game, lads. Sorry. It is. It just is. Um, something you said in one of your previous videos really hit home with me, and I'm paraphrasing here. It was something along the lines of, don't ever feel bad about losing at 40k because it's a bad game. It's poorly designed rubbish. And for some reason, that resonated with me because I've never thought about it quite like, like that. I have gone on longer than I, than I intended. Thank you again for all you do and keep on doing it. Regards, AJC. Um, yeah, I, I, that's true. That's true. Tent Edition is a poorly designed game. It's not a very good game. All right. Um, in terms of the war games that I played over the past couple of years, 40k is like, out of the four or five that I played, it would be about fourth or fifth. It's not a very good game. Just by and large, it's not. Right? Games Workshop aren't that good at writing games. Unless they're writing Age of Sigmar, weirdly. Because Age of Sigmar is a nicely balanced and very good game. I, I really do enjoy Age of Sigmar uh, on the rare occasion that I get to play it. Um, the lore's rubbish, which is why I don't play it that often, but like everything else is, is, is pretty good. Um, but Games Workshop have never been good at rules. Alright? Maybe way back in the day when they were more narrative focused, they were, they were more balanced, but my god, 10th edition... Even with all of the... This is the thing that, that video games have ruined for everybody. The constant patching of your rules. Dude, do it right the first time. Fucking playtest your rules. Just playtest them. To hell and back. To get them into a balanced state. And then release your new edition. You know? 10th uh, is now in a, in a stable place, I've been told. But every time I play a game of it, it still goes on for 2, 3, 4, 5 hours. Right? And we're doing a 2,000 point, point battle or whatever. It's like, dude, come on. Come on. And I'm playing against people who know what they're doing. These are against, like, vets who, who have played tons of, of battles of 10th edition. And we're, we're rifling through the turns. And we're still there for four or five fucking hours. It's ridiculous, man. It's silly. What? In all honesty, tournament players. You are the guys to ask. Put in the uh, comment section down below... Normally, what turn do you get to in a tournament game? Which is which is a three-hour lock, right? So in three hours, what turn do you get to? Because I've had so many tournament people saying, uh, no, it is balanced, you know, because uh, I finish games at tournaments all the time in under three hours. Yeah, I know the game finishes, dude, because it has to finish. But what turn are you on? If you're on turn three of five, the game's not fucking finished, is it? Stupid. It's ridiculous. Your war game shouldn't take four to five hours to play. That's it. Period. Alright? Unless it's an apocalypse game. That's an apocalypse game in 7th edition. Or in 6th edition. That's how long that game takes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so don't feel bad about it, man. And uh, if you want to know what to do about it, I would simply... Um, Realise what you like about the hobby. If you're not really enjoying playing 40k, then don't fucking play it. Alright? I don't mean go and play one-page rules. I mean, no, sit back and go, do you know what? I'm taking a break from gaming. I'm going to make some really cool armies. And then, when I get to play, I'll play one-page rules. It may mean that I'm only going to get to play once a month now, rather than two or three times a month, but at least I'm having fun. Your hobby time is precious, dude. So if you're not having fun doing 40k in 10th edition, then 10th edition ain't for you. Go somewhere else. Go do another part of the hobby. Go paint, go build, go convert, go write some lore. Alright? Find your people. There are tons of people out there who will play one-page rules with you. Alright? Try and nurture that part of your hobby. If you can. Anyway. Uh, Michael says, Hey, North. You can call me Michael. Well, thank God, because I just did. Hope you have a good time and can cool down with the, all the family stuff going on. This isn't really a nightmare. It's rather about the hobby throughout my life and how it took over a bit. It became a good evil to me. Maybe it just categorised as a cautionary tale, I suppose, but I'll try and keep it short. Okay, cool. I started Warhammer 40k in roughly 2005. I was 10 years old, if I remember correctly, and was introduced by a good friend and her father. I kicked it off with Battle for McCrag. As is the natural order of things, I started collecting Ultramarines, but was more drawn towards Tyranids ultimately. This also drew my brother into the hobby, and we just played the game together at home. 
Even though the two of us played half of the rules wrong, it worked, I suppose, and at some point I also started Kachachans and collected Lizardmen for some reason. That, loads of people say that I collected lizard, lizard men for some reason. They never have a reason why. <laughs> that went on until the very beginning of 6th edition, when we completely quit the hobby as we moved on with our lives. The setting never left us, though. We still played all the banger video games like Dawn of War and Space Marine. For a bit of extra context, I became extremely obese at this time. About 412 pounds. Whoa! That's big. Depending on your height, that dude. Even if you're six eight, you're a, you're fat. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But you know what I mean. If you're six eight and you're four hundred and twelve pounds, you are chubby. You are you are one chubby motherfucker. Anything below that, man, you are. You are. Uh, yeah. I lost it. I have lost it by now, but definitely left the permanent damage as a young man, dude. Yeah, that's devastating. I can't, I can't imagine. That's you know, devastating. Other things happening in that time left me traumatized and, in a way, left me cold as stone emotionally. I can only describe it as involuntary stoicism, maybe. Well, there's worse things to be than stoic, man. I'm telling you now. I don't think it is involuntary stoicism because uh, stoicism is something that you work towards. You're not really born that way and you don't become that. Um, stoicism isn't really something that's given to you by other things, right? Hmm. At least if you're looking at it in the Marcus Aurelius, you know, Aristotle version of it, the classics. So, it's not really something that you're you're given, like that you're, you're just thrown at, you know, that, that's your thing. You work on it yourself, you become stoic through your behaviour and your discipline, that's why you become stoic. Um, but I see what you mean, I see what you mean. I could barely show any emotions whatsoever. That obviously affected how others interacted with me too. At the end of 7th, the launch of 8th pretty much, my brother came back in 2017 into my life. Dawn of War 3 was absolute dog shit, but it sparked our hobby interest in you. I started Space Wolves at that point, but don't worry, I'm obviously not the loud or gloaty kind, I just liked the visuals. My name is not Dave after all. I can say you've you've seen a lot of my videos. I also found all of my old models. I thought they were lost, but my mum collected and stored them in a box in case I needed them again. She has no idea about the hobby, but always loved my little dudes, quote unquote, and kept them safe. She even kept the sprues with bits left on them. She calls my Mortarian Pretty Angel, quote unquote, pretty. Okay. On the other hand. My dad always despised the hobby, and still does to this day. Mostly for money reasons, but that's normal, I guess. The hobby just went onwards from that point on, and then the good evil part of it started creeping in. The past years led me to being an anxious person. In addition, I, always, I, w I was always one of the shy ones and the introverted kind. This includes the unusual... Uh, sorry, the usual insecurities and loneliness. That even empowered my cold attitude. During 2019, I became chronically sick, which caused me extra physical and mental suffering for years to come. But I kept it to myself and tried to deal with it on my own. Dude, that cold attitude, a lot of people will say that that's like stoicism. That's not. You, you can't be stoic, uh, stoic unless you love people and love other things. Alright? Because if you've got a cold attitude, you're not going to protect anybody. You're not going to heighten anyone's value in you. Do you know what I mean? That's not what stoicism is. Anyway, moving on. Bad idea, I know, but medication helped a bit, but had extreme side effects, applying extra pressure on top. Due to the medication, I have developed a caffeine addiction. I took on uh, an average of six times the recommended caffeine intake a day, which, by the way, is three is less than three mg per kilogram. I weigh 85 kilograms and I'm uh, 117 pa 187 pounds now. To achieve that, I drank the blackest sludge of coffee like water. To cope with it all, I started buying new models. I really enjoyed the modeling process. It was therapy, even though I wasn't sure aware of it at the time. This led to me starting full new armies at once. And over and over again, 
filling the void created by rapidly growing depression. I wasn't spending any time on the painting part, sadly. Well, very few models on the occasion, at least. Making me an aspiring Grey Legion overlord. I don't want to make this part, but if I have to admit it, the pressure on me, uh, sorry, the pressure on me from all that, work and other social reasons, brought me to the edge of you know what. What stopped me may need be another hobby kind of nightmare, but it is a key moment of my life and kind of a beautiful one, beautiful one to me. But I'm not sure if I want to share that. Well, please do if you want to. It's up to you, man. I, I'm not going to force you to. Um, not that I can anyway, but, you know, I'd like to hear it. Anyway, after some time, I completely became a Grey Legion overlord and keeper of the backlog. The entire collection spans about 50,000 points and beyond, spread over 27 armies. Not the worst in existence, but that doesn't make it right either. Yeah, do you know what I think you've done? The only thing you've done is... You've lent into the hobby to, like, sort of aid you in your time of need, but instead of using it as a scaffold to build your house around, right, you've instead let the scaffold become the house. So you're living in a ramshackle house with holes in it. Because you think the scaffold's doing a good enough job to keep you, well, aware and on you go. Do you know what I mean? That's not what 40k is for in this instance. 40k is about the scaffolding that goes around the house that you're building. Okay? That's what it... For that's what all good hobbies are supposed to be. I work a good paying job, so I had no financial issues due to the hobby. Yet, I guess. By 2023, I got mostly over my sickness, anxiousness, depression, coldness, and the fucked up medication. Thanks to the hobby and also you. Going to actual therapy would have been cheaper, probably. Yeah, probably. Probably. Uh, I now started painting my models. 96 models in one and a half years so far. Not fast enough, but I will get there. Dude, th there is no... Okay. There is no schedule here. If you're enjoying what you're doing, you're doing it correctly. Alright? Okay. It takes ages as I try hard to learn new techniques all the time. Right in time for 10th edition to be more dog shit than, Do than Dawn of War 3. No customization. War gear. No. Nothing. No psychic phase. Yeah, I know, man. I will keep to the previous editions. Horus Heresy and Battletech for now. More models. Yay for me. I am, planning to, I am planning to sell armies I don't use off all soon. I was also thinking about painting a few of them, one army at a time, and using them to introduce others into my hobby. If they enjoy the army, and they ask me if they can buy it, then that would be a win-win. I wouldn't push it on them, of course. But that would be a lot of work at first. My collection is so big that my furniture in the hobby room is completely made up from my model cases. This in itself causes me to stress out a bit now. I recently had a nightmare about it. I was back in 7th grade or something and had to write for a test. But I couldn't fill it out because the test was occupied by my stupid model cases. When I tried to move them, I, I scratched my beloved Black Templar Codex that was stuck between them for some reason. Then I tried to inspect the damage codex. A white metal BT mech, I think a cougar, fell out of all the boxes and smashed onto the classroom floor. It didn't break surprisingly, but it's a dream after all. It didn't go much further as I woke up. People, if, you th if you're thinking about getting into the hobby, start small. Please, finish your models. Do as I say, not as I do. That's all for now. Thank you, North, for all you do. You're part of the reason why I get better mentally in recent times. I have never shared any of this before, but think it's okay of it being a part of healing, I guess. I haven't written such a long story in a long time. I hope it wasn't too all over the place, or that I forgot the detail that would all make it make more sense. I attached a few pictures of my painting journey, including your favourite faction and some, and some of my original boys from 2005. Have a good one. Michael, the yet still Grey, Lord, the Grey Legion Overlord. Let's have a look at these, shall we? So, um... Ooh, nice! Dude, you are a good painter. That's nice stuff. Raven Guard, right? No, Iron Hands. Iron Hands. I'm gonna say Iron Hands. Nice, beaky boys. I like it. I like them, they're cool. Alright, you told me these are Grey Knights. Go fuck yourself. Okay, I'm just gonna say it, right? You said these are Grey Knights. 
in the in the description of the of the picture when I put them on. Well, now like, you had your little moment, you know. You, you had your little, yeah. Just look at them, man. Really well painted, gorgeous models. You're wasting your talent on space wolves. That's all I'm saying. Ugh. I mean, I mean, I've, they're fine. They're fine. They look great. All right. Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I like these space wolves. All right. I like these space wolves. These space wolves are pretty cool. I would collect these space wolves. The light blue cartoon Viking Saturday morning space wolves. Not a chance in hell. But these dudes look cool. These look really cool. I like these on the, the there's a channel on YouTube that does one a space wolf faction called the Space Bears. But they look pretty cool. They're not space wolves, you know what I mean? They're, 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 but they do look pretty cool. Anyway, you're a really good painter, man. Keep at it. Absolutely keep at it. What a, what a, I would love to see a, a full smorgasbord of some of your armies. That look pretty cool. Anyway, moving on. Uh, JD Mac says, Hey North. It, it, you say Mac, but it's pronounced Mark. Is it Mark? Like Mark 5? You know what I mean? Anyway, JD Mac says, Hey North. Thanks for the channel and all that. And also, thanks for the WhatsApp group. And it's really hilarious listening to so many weird stories from Games Workshop about from other managers aside from myself. Most of which, of course, you can't use, but here we go. This is mine and should be alright to be read out. As with others, working for Games Workshop was actually my ideal job and the job that I'd always wanted. I was heavily insulated from the corporate side of the hobby from the many managers around me in my local area who saw that I was one of them, quote unquote, and basically they made sure that this new manager in me had backup. Whenever we did training, my bros were always there helping me out, telling me what to say and who to speak to so that I could traverse the many pitfalls of Corporate Games Workshop. As such, I ended up staying with the company for a few years, which was awesome until I finally got a real job and left. Yes, working for Games Workshop in retail is not a proper job, at least not in my opinion. Let me ask you a question if you're getting butt hurt by that. Can you support yourself on your wage if you have rent to pay in your job? If not, it's not a job. Any job in which you, in which you have to live with your parents to survive is not a real job. Not a real one. Leave and get another if you can. Alright, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Moving on. Anyway, here we go with my tale. It was my second training seminar... And when sitting in this weird room with a load of people in Nottingham around a table sl slinging out ideas for the Christmas rush, my mind was wandering. There were a few lady managers in there too who were actually lovely to look at and, of course, my eyes were wandering. But that's not where the story comes in. I am in here chilling out, listening to the Games Workshop trainers drone on about targets and introduction games and things like that and my stomach starts to rumble. And I quote, I see Mac already wants his lunch. <laughs> one of the trainer's jokes. No one really laughs, but one brown nose in front of me does. Things carry on and I am a little bit embarrassed, but hey, it is what it is. I can tell though that something is not right. There is a bowling ball of pain growing in my gut. A stabbing pain almost doubling me over as sweat pours from my brow. I just about managed to hold things together so people can't actually see that I'm in so much discomfort. But things can't go on as they are. You see, things are going perfectly in training, at least for me. I've had a bit of input here. I'm doing quite popularly right now. and I'm about to leave in 10 minutes for my train. I just need to hold on. Then it comes. I let out a fart that sounds like I have shoved every Land Raider variant directly up my arse. The smell was pure, unadulterated methane and shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Luckily, I didn't shit myself and the pain was instantly gone. The room was silent and I looked around. All the hot lady managers were covering their noses. Oh, no. Oh, no. The same trainer said, and I quote, 
Was that necessary in a professional space, Mac? Unquote. Uh, sorry, mate. I held my hands up without any, without any other options left. Uh, I had a lot of stomach pain and it just kind of came out. I didn't follow through though or anything though, lad, so no worries, panic over. Continue. Unquote. You got balls, man. They broke for lunch instead and I went home. <laughs> well, glad to see your part in this uh, and the training was done already. My epic fart became legend and my fellow managers ridiculed me mercilessly. But to be honest, that was fine with me. It was deserved on my part. I'd been there for so long that they couldn't just sack me or ostracize me. But I was not asked for input at training again. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, silver linings. Love all you do, North. Mac. I bet you they were just afraid of what they were going to trigger in your IBS. Your irritable bowel syndrome. If they asked you for any sort of input. That's hilarious. Oh, God. Anyway, I love you a long time. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to do another, another 40k rant tomorrow where we're going to be doing a Primark tier list. So I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.